<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who hunt, camp, go on deep wood hikes, etc. What was the scariest thing you've ever seen out there? I went to school in the middle of the woods for most of my life, and while I wouldn't say it's an urban legend, we all knew not to talk about the deer. There was a family of deer that lived outside of the woods, and they'd come in and out of the school every once in a while. One of these days, my friends and I were out on the playground when we heard them walking by, and we looked up. Now, there were around 12 deer this year, as we had counted them previously, so it was weird as hell to see 13 of them. We were staring at them when the 13th deer turned to look at us, and I swear to whatever god exists out there that this thing had solid white eyes and sharp, bloody teeth. The two of us were having a stare down, and I just had that adrenaline rush of I'm about to die, before a gap in my memory happened. For about 6 hours, I have absolutely no idea what happened, it's the adrenaline rush, and then me climbing into bed 6 hours later because I have a fever. To this day, I have no clue what it is, but my friends and I never spoke about it again. Mountain biking. I have a couple of LED lights for night riding, a wide floodlight on my handlebars, and a narrow beam spotlight on my helmet. I'm in Florida and was riding through a swampy jungle when I noticed the trail was covered with these little, sparkly, emerald green shiny things. I assumed they were crystals like quartz or something, except that the trails are mostly sand and shouldn't have anything like that. So I decided to stop and see what the reflection was, and it was light reflecting back from the eyes of a giant wolf spider. Arg. The trail is covered with spiders. Literally hundreds and hundreds of them. And those are only the ones facing me. Another time on the same trails, I was flying down a long straightaway, and up ahead, I could see a pair of eyes on the trail reflecting back at me. They were low to the ground, so I thought they were a raccoon, a possum, or something. As I got closer, they started to rise up. And up. And up some more, until they were, it seemed, as tall as a person. Just as the creature got into range of my spotlight, it turned around and bolted into the trees. I only saw it back in my spotlight for a moment, but whatever it was, it was big and covered in medium brown hair. I'm guessing it was a deer, but I'm not sure, and I wasn't sticking around to find out. So I was camping with my church youth group one year, and we were camping on one of the group's leader's properties that was right on the edge of a forest. Anyways, a group of us decided to mess with one of the older kids, he was 17 then, by jump scaring him with one of those serial killer hockey masks. It was very juvenile, I know. So one of us goes to see if he's in his tent. They walk up and yell. Hey, are you in there? And we hear a response of go away. In his voice. So the kid with the mask went up to his tent and tried to shake it, then popped out wearing the mask, but that's when we realized he wasn't there. We're confused, so we head back to the main group up at the fire, where we find the kid who said he'd been at the fire for the past two hours. Mind you, there was no way for him to have gotten from his tent to the fire before us. The scariest part was that night. I heard footsteps walking around my tent all night. Along with the howls of a group of coyotes out in the woods. I still joke that we were visited by skinwalkers. Two or three times a year, we vacation in a cabin in the wilderness. Me, my wife, and our three young children and two dogs I am no stranger to the wild and have made a lot of multiple day and week long solo trips in national parks and even in the arctic circle. Yesterday I went for a 10 mile solo hike. At the farthest point, after two hours, I heard my children arguing, playing, crying, laughing, and calling me from the forest. I was totally alone, and my first instinct was to run through the thick brush and trees where the sound was coming from, but then I realized that it couldn't be my kids, and I should just walk on and ignore it. I decided to walk back to the cabin. The whole family was there and never left. I know how my children sound, and I swear it was them. Later, I realized the combination of all the sounds, laughing, crying, playing, etc. made no sense. What was this experience? What did I hear? One time, me and my best friend were camping by the lake and decided we wanted to go on a night hike. It was like 30 minutes to sunset, and the trail was about 8 miles. While we were walking, we saw these weird lights in the forest that looked like tail lights, but we knew there was no tail and the woods were way too thick to drive a car into the woods, so we decided to go a little off the trail to find them, and they just kept going deeper and deeper into the woods, so we decided to head back, but when we turned around, we didn't recognize where we were, and it was getting dark, so we knew the lake was about southwest, so we used the sun on the horizon to find our way back to the trail, and by the time we got there, we had been walking for 20 minutes, but we were 6 miles in on the trail. It still blows my mind how we walked off the trail and somehow cleared 6 miles in that much time. 
But to make it worse, the entire time we were walking through the woods, something was following us. We never saw what it was, and to make it a little less spooky, we joked about silly things, it could be like a puppy or a garden gnome, but in reality, we were both freaking out internally. It took us two hours to hike back to our camp. This happened a few years ago when I was mountain walking. We started as a large group, but after some time of everyone choosing their own pace, I ended up walking by myself. I was walking downhill through a thick forest area when I slipped on an unstable part of the trail, and I slid on my butt to where the path goes straight. Before I could get up, a deer walked out of the trees on my left and stood in front of me. This was not natural because deer usually avoid human contact. Something was really off about this deer, and I wasn't sure what. Its eyes looked lifeless, and its aura was one of uneasiness. Then it opened its mouth to show multiple rows of what looked to be razor-sharp teeth and made an ear-shattering scream. It sounded like nothing I had ever heard before. It sounded unreal, like it shouldn't exist. I watch quite a lot of horror movies, and I've yet to come across a scream so demonic. After the scream ended, it just closed its jaw and walked away to the other side of the woods. I never told this story to anyone before. I've heard of stories other mountain walkers talked about and how everyone that does gets labeled insane, so I kept it to myself. But I know what I saw, hell, I can't forget no matter how much I try, and it still gives me shivers to this day. This happened about a year ago when I was 12, and me and a bunch of friends went to YMCA Camp Heyauentha. And it's about 11.30 to 12 o'clock, and our two counselors and four of the kids are asleep, and we are talking a bit as you do late at night, and then we hear a long scratch outside, the next morning we checked, and there were massive scratch marks the width of a piece of bubble gum, and then we hear someone say, hello? Guys? And at this time of night during camp, nobody at all is outside, everyone is in their cabins. So we are all shitting ourselves like who the duck just said that, but whispering extremely quietly about me, and then a roughly 8-9 foot tall humanoid man with horns and glowing eyes walks right in the door and stands there for 3 hours and just stares directly at me while I pretend to sleep, scared out of my wits, and then I fell asleep the next morning. There was nobody there. I have been paranoid ever since. My buddy and I were on a hunting trip, probably 50 miles up a logging road and into some thick timber. We set up camp outside of my truck. At about midnight, this white light lit up about a mile away on a steep hillside. We sat and watched for the next couple hours as we moved up and down the hillside. We thought it might be a hunter looking for the animal he got, but this hillside is a recently logged area and has dead timber and branches everywhere, so there is no way it could be a person with how smooth and constant it was moving. The next weekend, we were set up out of my cabin, and we decided to drive up to an area. My buddy has a leather hat, and we took pictures at the top of the mountain that show him wearing it. Anyway, on our way back down, he noticed he was missing it and thought he left it up top, but we were too far away to care about turning back that day. We get back to the cabin, and it was sitting on the front steps frozen. Mind you, we just drove about 30 to 40 miles up this hill, and nobody is up there or has access to it. That night we kept hearing noises around the cabin, so we locked the door and windows before we went to bed and woke up to everything opening up. My cousin lived three houses down from me. Our homes are in the middle of the woods. You can walk east from our homes and not cross a road for 30 miles. Middle of nowhere, just so you get the setting. So my cousin is walking in the woods one day and gets himself lost. He tried to find his way home, but things started to become hopeless as the sun started to go down. That's when he said to himself, out loud, I'm ducked if I don't find a road or something soon. That's when a voice from behind him said follow me. He turned and saw a dark, femoral figure standing in the distance behind him. He's scared but more afraid of being lost in the woods all night, so he followed. The dark figure stayed a distance ahead of him but led him to a road that leads to our road. The figure never spoke and stayed a good distance ahead of my cousin. Once he got to the road, the figure just kept walking into the woods, and his cousin got the hell out of there. He's not known for lying and has told the story to myself and a few other people without any details changing. I've also seen some weird stuff up in those woods. So I tend to believe him. I was hiking through the remnants of a remote, long abandoned town in the surrounding area. To get as far into the woods as I was, you had to cross fallen trees over a creek three times. I had just crossed the third bridge and was about five miles in when something blue caught my eye just ahead of me. There was a man, at least in his sixties, wearing blue satin pajamas, sitting in a tree. The closer I got to him, the louder he laughed, it wasn't a maniacal laugh, but it set off all the alarms in my head nonetheless. He also wasn't wearing any shoes and looked well-groomed and clean. I gave him a friendly nod as I passed, and he just kept laughing. Then it stopped. 
I turned, and he was gone. There was no branch cracking, no plant rustling, nothing. He was just gone. It still rubs me the wrong way. The area I was in was a pretty rough hike and very secluded. Not very many people venture as deep as I did that day. I had no idea what was going on there. I have something that happened to me and my friends. We were on a boy scout camping slash shooting trip. There were 20 to 30 of us. We were in a little cabin thing with windows on the front and back and a front and back door. There were wooden tables all around the area. The adult cabin, with the bathroom, was about an eighth of a mile down a gravel road in the dark. There was obviously a buddy system because of the boy scouts. So it's around midnight, and everyone has been telling scary stories, like normal camping trips. Well, I had to go to the bathroom and ask my friend to come along. He said sure, and he got our knives, we knew that there were bears in the woods, and it made us feel safer. Well, we went to the bathroom and began our walk back. This is where it got scary. I felt an instinctual, not sure if that's the right word, fear. I looked at my friend, and he had the same look as me. We begin to walk a little faster and unfold our pocket knives. I then turned around and saw it. It looked similar to a cat, but it was six feet tall and was on its hind legs, kind of hunched over. I freaked the hell out and started running. My friend sees it, and we sprint back to the cabin. It began making a moaning or howling noise, it was somewhere between the two, and followed us slowly. We pounded on the door, and the guys let us in. We told them what we saw, and they actually believed us. So we locked the front door and look at the back door. It had no lock. We pushed a table up against it and had a kid there with his knife for safety. We drew the blinds on all the windows that had them, one of them didn't, and we sat there with all the lights on. Then we see the eyes outside the windows without blinds. We are all shitting ourselves, and the thing slowly walked to the back door. We heard it bumping up against it, maybe trying to open it, we think. It then left, but we still thought we were going to die. No one slept. When the adults came to wake us up, we told them, and they laughed and said we were making it up. We know it happened, even if they don't believe us. I grew up in a rural area of Hunterdon County, in a little town called Reddington. My family had 14 acres, mostly forested. Some scotch and white pines and spruces we had planted, and then a lot of hardwoods. This included a lot of mulberry trees from when they tried to make a silk producing area. Anyway, I lived there from the year before kindergarten until 8th grade. I grew up in the forests. I would go hiking with my dad all the time, and we crossed into other properties and then by myself a lot. So I was very familiar with the territory. One time, I was following the creek on our property. Downstream, it led to Holland Brook, which eventually found its way to the Raritan River. I had followed it a few times and always came to the same spring. But this time, there was a different set of shale cutouts, it really freaked me out. I had traced this creek a number of times, this wasn't an offshoot. I had to cross a number of property lines, as evidenced by the number of barbed wire fences I climbed through, and finally, when I got to the head of the creek, there was a place with about eight different animal skulls. I knew some were deer, some were groundhogs, and there was one really weird one, I think at the time, which was some feral hog looking back. I was afraid to touch any of them. I remember instantly feeling watched. I got my back to a tree, I think I was about nine at this time, maybe ten, and always took either a machete or hatchet with me when playing in the woods per my dad's instructions. I waited, listening and hearing nothing. None of the birds, the rattle of leaves from small mammals moving, or even snakes, we had a lot of copperheads on our property, my dad sold cut firewood, I used to have to split logs, and they were always by wood piles. I finally gathered myself up and slowly worked my way home. I remember stopping at our barn, which was at the bottom of a little hillside or cliff from the house, and waiting in the loft, just seeing if anything in the woods was moving or following me. My horses, one quarter horse, one Arabian, and a Shetland for my sister, and goats all came into the barn, which was not typical in the daytime. But it could have been because I was in the barn, but I remember thinking it was weird. Finally, after about 30 minutes, I went up to the house, but I remember for a few days after that feeling being watched whenever I was down by the animals in the barn. I also never found that same clearing again, and I tried. My family and a family friend's family were going on a hiking trip to the Appalachian Mountains. We had rented cabins at a camping site and had arranged certain paths to follow each day of our trip, four days long, that we would walk each day. The first three days went great, we saw wildlife, had a good time, and talked a lot. But on the fourth day, we were taking a trail that was more secluded and overgrown than the others. We were walking for about 30 minutes when I was hit with this overwhelming feeling of uneasiness. The feeling just stayed there, no matter how hard I tried to beat it back. 
Then, and everyone else on the hike denies this, I hear singing in a language that I've never heard before. It's like the singing described in the myth of the sirens, sweet and enchanting, yet the music invoked a feeling of fear, down to my bones. Everyone else seems completely oblivious to it. I tried telling my dad that something was wrong, but he just told me I was probably tired and that we would stop soon. So, about five minutes later, the singing just kept getting louder, and my heart was racing. We had stopped to rest and eat something as well. I wish with all my heart that we hadn't stopped. About two minutes into our little rest, the singing is still getting progressively louder, but my nerves have settled slightly. Then everything falls silent. Everyone in our group, about 12 people, suddenly turns to the trees to our left. A tall figure in a black cloak was barely visible between the trees. It was a woman, much taller than normal people are, with pure white hair flowing out of her hood. Her head is down, but her face is still slightly visible. All I can make out is that her skin is very pale yellow, like old paper. As we watch, she just stalks closer to our group, finally stopping right at the edge of the trees. She looks up, and I swear to God that as long as I live and breathe, I will never forget her face. Her eyes are completely white, with no pupils or irises visible. I don't want to know why. She stares at us for a moment and then smiles. It was horrifying. She had no teeth. She then begins to talk. She had a horrible scratchy, high-pitched voice and said, leave this place while you still can. I'll be watching you, don't try anything. I blink, and she's gone. Everyone is silent. I was hiking by myself in a state forest near where I lived that I'd heard was a nice, secluded place to enjoy a walk in the woods. It was a gorgeous fall afternoon, the sky was a lovely blue with few clouds, the sun was warm, and there was a slight breeze. I walked on a trail along a small ridge above one side of the pond. I got to the far side of the pond after about half an hour of meandering, and the trail just disappeared. I reasoned with myself that as long as I stayed within sight of the pond, I couldn't get too lost. So I wandered into the woods a bit deeper to get around a marshy area and continued on my way. After a few minutes, I came out of the trees and onto the edge of the pond. I crept close to the edge of the water to see what I could see. Then it hit me, it was absolutely silent. I got goosebumps, and the hair on the back of my neck stood up. There wasn't a single other sound besides my breathing. No birds, no bugs, no people, not even a hint of a breeze. I slowly turned around to face the trees I'd just emerged from. I had the vague idea that when the forest goes completely silent, it means there's some sort of predator around. I looked through the trees. I didn't see anything, but I was filled with dread and felt very uneasy. I realized I didn't have any cell service, and no one knew I was hiking in this forest. I had about three hours of daylight left. At this point, I thought I was roughly halfway around the pond. I didn't want to go back the way I came, because that gave me bad feelings. I knew I couldn't stay where I was, so that only left going forward. After five minutes, the normal forest sounds returned and stayed, but I was on edge the rest of the hour and a half it took me to get back to my car. I hike by myself all the time, and I have never been afraid in a forest before. But that one, I was convinced I was going to die in that forest that afternoon. I still have no idea what was in there with me, and I have refused to go back. My extended family went on a big camping trip together as a last vacation for my grandpa before he passed away. My older brother and I, about 15 and 13, shared a tent. The camp was set up in a small clearing in the woods, but nearby there was this really large open field with waist-high grass. My brother and I had our tent closer to this field, so we could see out into it while still nestled in the trees. We were well away from any town, and there were no houses or whatnot nearby. In the middle of the night, I had a very creepy dream and sat straight up. For a moment, I just caught my breath and tried to calm down, but then I noticed my older brother sitting up as well. He asked what happened, and I told him I had a weird dream, he said he had one as well and described my exact dream. We both dreamed we were watching out the tent window while a woman walked out into the middle of the field and, with a very piercing voice, sang a song that started beautiful but became creepier and creepier as she slowly turned to first face our tent and then begin approaching it. We both woke up when she got close enough to see her face, which was screwed up and looked pissed. He even described exactly what she was wearing and everything. We opened the tent window and checked out, but nothing was out there. We still weren't able to sleep, and the next morning we moved our tent to the opposite side of the camp. It's engraved on my mind, and I'm sure I will never be able to forget it. In late September, I was wild camping somewhere in rural Montana. I was quite a ways out there, far from the nearest town. I went off into the woods and set up camp. After using the last few minutes of sunlight to eat some dinner, 
brush my teeth, and write in my journal, I laid down to get some sleep. Over the past month or so of sleeping in the woods, I have grown very accustomed to the nighttime sounds of the forest. The chirping of crickets and the croaking of toads can be quite loud. There was always at least a slight breeze rustling the leaves of the trees. It was always a highlight of my night, though not particularly uncommon, to hear the distant yips and howls of coyotes, and one night I was very excited to hear two owls, one on either side of my tent, hooting back and forth. So that one night in Montana, it was quite alarming to be surrounded by a completely silent forest. There was not a single sound to be heard. Even the air was dead still, with no breeze to rustle the dry leaves of autumn still clinging to the trees. And it was honestly terrifying. On that night, there would occasionally be the snapping of a twig or some other such sound that normally would be lost in the other commotion. But that night, there was no background noise to mask the few sounds that did pop up, and so all of those little twig snapping type things seemed 100 times louder. On that trip, I slept in some very loud places, like the night I pitched my tent right next to some train tracks that ended up being much more active than I thought. I shared a hostel room with a guy who snored and a bunkmate who talked in his sleep. Both on the same night. But that night of absolute silence in the woods of Montana was the worst night of sleep of the entire 179-day trip. It was the loudest silence I've ever heard, and that absolutely terrified me. I was exploring a new trail I'd never been to before near the Lake Bonneville Shoreline Trail, and I was having a lovely time until I came to a long straight section of the trail, and I could see up ahead two trees that looked like they'd been propped together to create an incomplete archway over the trail. On the tip of each tree was a deer skull, placed so that if you walked in the center of the trail, they were both looking down at you as you passed them. Seeing this obviously set off some alarm bells. I kept walking, but you can bet I kept a firm grip on the handle of my big old knife, which I keep with me while hiking. Moments after I passed the archway with the skulls, I started getting chills all over, and I felt like I was being watched. I also remember it suddenly getting very quiet in the woods, where moments before I could hear birds and the chatter of small animals in the brush. Anyone who is an experienced outdoorsman can tell you that sudden silence in the woods is not a good sign, it generally means there's a predator of some kind nearby. It almost feels like the whole forest is holding its breath to wait for it to pass. I only made it like 20 feet past the archway before the bad feeling in my gut convinced me to turn around and leave. I felt like I was being stalked or watched the whole time I was going down the trail, until I got closer to the parking lot. I didn't see a thing, though. To this day, I have no idea what that was all about, but I'm glad I listened to my gut and turned around. Any supernatural explanations aside, it easily could have been a cougar or a black or grizzly bear that was living out there. Or a moose. I didn't see or experience anything other than the feeling of being followed or watched. When you're out in the mountains alone, though, you trust that gut feeling. So some years ago, I went on a church retreat camping trip where we would ride in canoes and row to different places, camp the night, and keep rowing. One time we set up a spot, and I noticed a slab of concrete with a hole and a lid, which I found out was the toilet. And it was pretty far from the camp, I guess, so the smell wouldn't get to us while eating. Anyway, that night it was probably 1 in the morning and still dark when I woke up needing to use the restroom. But seeing how dark it was, I was like, hell ducking no, am I going to go out in the dark? But I really had to go, so I decided, duck it, I'm going to that slab. I could have just peed near the tent area, but I was pee shy and didn't want to get called out. Nothing was spookier than trekking through those dark woods, thinking of all the different animals that would maul me out here. I didn't even bring a flashlight. I found the slab and went to work. Not a couple seconds later, I heard something behind me. It turned out that one of my friends from the tent followed me with the same idea. I didn't know who because it was too dark. They probably were too scared to go out themselves and followed me when I got out. I was like, bruh, you ducking scared me. And all they muttered was moo 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 so I finished up and decided to be an asshole and ditched them there by running back, like good luck being alone there. I guess this scared them because they started chasing after me as well, even at one point getting on four legs to catch up but I was too fast. I made it back to my tent only to notice that both my tentmates were there, sleeping. There was no way they got back before I did. That's when the realization hit that I never clearly recognized who was next to me, and the way they chased me on four legs was off-putting and weird. I dove into the tent quickly and tried to sleep. I asked if anyone went to the bathroom last night, and they all confirmed no. So yeah, I'm not sure who was next to me on that concrete slab. I'd never been a big fan of camping. In 2012, for some reason or another, my friend and I decided to take a Saturday night to camp on private property, we had permission from the owner, on the bank of a small lake in the rural American Southeast. 
the plot of land itself wasn't entirely removed from civilization. We were 5 to 10 miles outside of a small suburb of a mid-sized southern city. It definitely was not easy to access, however, and the only way in was a gated, narrow dirt road across a levee that spanned one side of the lake. This road was gated and locked. The owner gave us his code, we pulled the car through and locked the gate behind us. If you've ever been down south, you know how quickly it gets isolated outside of cities. It's not uncommon to go for a 30-minute drive straight out of town and come upon cabins that are obviously off the grid. My friend and I were used to living in the suburbs, so we were just happy to see stars and hear the sounds of nature. We were at our very utilitarian camp, simply looking around and enjoying the night, when suddenly my buddy sat up real straight. He said something like, do you see that guy over there? He pointed to the other side of the small lake. I didn't see anything. I sat up slightly and said, nah, it's just the dark playing tricks on you. He seemed to be shaken. No, look. There's a bunch of faces behind the trees now. That got my attention, and I sat up fully, rubbing my eyes to try to gain full focus. And then I saw them. Small, round, white faces stared back at me from across the lake. Maybe 15 to 20 of them. All were positioned in such a way that their bodies were behind the trees and only their heads were visible. The best way I can describe the faces is as very pale, somehow internally illuminated children. I should mention that neither of us were drinking or high. We were too young for that. The faces weren't moving. I was kind of sitting there in shock, thinking that my eyes would adjust and I would see that they were reflections, bugs, owls, or something. But I would never come to that realization. I stared right back at them for what felt like five minutes, looked back, and then they were gone. Bodies of water carry sound extremely well, and we heard extensive shuffling from the other side of the lake and a couple of small branches snap. It's incredible what your ears pick up on during an otherwise silent night. My buddy was tearing up a little when he said, what the hell were those? And I didn't have a good answer. Neither of us slept particularly well. I definitely felt validated in my feelings about disliking camping. But what were we going to do? I tried to do some research on the internet but never found a phenomenon that could explain that. My brother likes to go camping by himself, and it's usually in the same spot, a national forest somewhere in Oregon. So this time he gets there later than usual and sets up camp. He goes check out the lake and sees three cars, all came together, I think, camping across, which is normal. Note, his side of the lake is the forestry, woodsy side, so he's got to walk about 25 to 30 feet to get to the lake. Across the lake is a more open sandy beach, and people would drive up and set up their tents on the beach close to the water. This is a huge lake, and to get to the sandy beach side, you've got to drive another 30 minutes from my brother's spot. Then another 30 minute drive down an extremely narrow, steep, rocky terrain to get to the beach. So it's about dusk, and my brother goes back to his truck to get his fishing gear to do some night fishing. So he gets back to the lake and sets up his fishing pole. He looks across the lake and notices everyone's grabbing and packing their stuff into their cars. He thought it was weird since before they looked like they were settling in and would be camping overnight. After he sees them leave, he starts to get a weird feeling, so he leaves the lake and heads back to his tent. He tries to brush it off and starts a fire. Then he said that all of a sudden everything got quiet. Like, really quiet. He looked around, and suddenly he heard this low rumbling, like a growl or raspy breathing, in a tall bush near him, and he saw the bush shake. He got his gun, threw his gear in the truck, threw water on the fire, and noped out of there quick. He said that was the fastest packing he's ever done, it was only later that he realized that the people across the lake were throwing and loading their stuff like he did. He's oblivious like that, so he thinks whatever spooked him was the same thing that spooked them. He never knew if it was an animal or what, but for something to spook the campers across the lake and then be on his side and spook him was hard to explain. Whatever it was, he said it gave him an awful feeling. I live in a part of Alaska where there's nothing but woods all around. I'm the only person who lives in these woods for about 20.5 miles all around, so visitors are always a special event. I decided to go camping in the woods, about 5 miles away from my cabin. I found a nice clearing and set up camp before nightfall. These woods aren't very quiet, there are always birds chirping, the rustling of leaves, and bunnies and deer running about. It was about 7 p.m. when the first incident happened. I was listening to the wilderness outside of my tent while the free was dying down outside. I had my pack strung up in a tree and had my 12-gauge unloaded to my right. All of a sudden, all noises in the area stopped. But then I heard what sounded like snow crunching. I thought it was just a deer, the only real predators in the area that I knew about were bears. But this was far too heavy to be a deer or a bear. 
It was circling my camp. All I could hear was the snow crunching underneath what sounded like a two-legged animal, slowly getting closer. It did this for hours. I had my 12 gauge ready but only remembered it wasn't loaded until the animal was about 7 feet away from my tent. I grabbed my box of buckshot and put the first shell in. Click on the footsteps that stopped. Click click. I kept straining to hear anything, but it never came. I fell asleep for a few hours but woke up at around 2 am. My tent was open. I saw my shotgun right outside of my tent. I felt like I was being watched. All I could see were the stars and the pitch black nothingness. But two stars moved. I didn't know how to react. The two stars that moved were now coming closer. They were eyes. The animal had to have been 9 feet tall, and it kept coming closer. I could smell it now. It smelled like rotten meat and death. My shotgun was only a foot away from my hand, and I carefully grabbed it. I prayed that it was still loaded and that this thing hadn't unloaded it. I pumped the shell into the chamber and took the shot. The light was almost blinding in the dark wilderness. But what I saw was still worse. It was hairy. Too hairy to be a human, too long to be a bear. Its feet were gigantic and a dark color. The face had no hair but was the same color as the feet. The eyes were huge and were looking right at me. The mouth was wide open, and the teeth were long and yellow. The arms were long and hairy, just like the legs. Its height was about 9 feet, maybe a few inches less. After the shot, I heard a scream that shook the tent and the ground around it. I hit the animal. I heard it run off into the wilderness, screaming all the way. I started packing right away, in the pitch black night, looking up at the stars. None moved this time, though. As I was leaving the clearing in which I made my camp, I looked back and saw those same huge eyes. Shining in the darkness. And they moved towards me. I ran through the woods, unsure of where I was going and what the time was. I could hear leaves snapping behind me, and when I looked back, the eyes were there. But they were closer this time. I saw the lights of my house in the distance through the thick woods. I could still hear the snapping, but it was farther back this time. I made it home and locked my door. The paranoia almost made me pass out. I still felt like I was being watched, even though I closed all the curtains on the window. I was in the living room for about an hour. It was now 5.30 am and the sun would be rising soon. I looked around the house, still paranoid. I saw the window above the sink in the kitchen, but there was nothing there. I felt relieved for a few seconds. Until the eyes moved into place there. Looking right at me. We made eye contact, and I saw the first rays of sunlight coming through the window. The animal grunted and stomped back into the forest, shaking the ground and cabin as it moved. I don't see it often anymore, but it does show up. Sometimes, I see the eyes. It only comes at night, but it's there. I feel that we've come to an agreement. I stay away from the woods at night, and I don't get eaten. Alright, so to begin, I, an 18-year-old female, work as a camp counselor in Alberta, Canada. My summer camp is somewhat not really close to the stony natives' land. The camp is close by to a hiking trail, and we're by the edge of a conservation reserve. Across the road from us is a creek. If you keep following the creek downstream, about 900 meters, with three creek crossings, you'll find a fence, which is at the edge of the reserve. If you keep following the fence away from the road and going past that by like 150 meters, you'll find an old tow trailer. The majority of my co-workers always avoid this place, as it's known to be an area related to high-level creepy paranormal activity. This area is of high interest to me, and I feel heavily drawn to it, despite my heavy sense of dread. I feel as if there's something that needs to be discovered there, and for some reason whatever entity or, I guess, Forest Guardian wants me to be the one to do so, or at least that's what I believe. My intuition tells me something bad happened there, and I've always been a bit spiritual. I dislike going to this area alone, and the second time I've gone to explore it was around 10.30 at night, pitch black, and two of my friends that I brought along were being complete idiots and singing and being, I guess, in a way, shit disturbing whatever energy form was there. Whatever the entity was, it appeared to my one friend as we were traveling back. He said it was around 4 feet tall and ran on all fours back into the woods and across the fence. It made some kind of noise right next to me, and the best way I could describe it was that it sounded almost exactly like a bow drill. I believe this was a warning or scare for us to leave the forest, and we booked it out of there. I've tried doing research on native folklore, myths, or stuff that appears in the forest near the Rocky Mountains on the Alberta side, but I haven't had any luck. My family has a hunting cabin in the Allegheny National Forest in Pennsylvania. My grandpa, who worked in a steel mill in Pittsburgh, bought the land in the 1970s. Allegedly, there was a gravesite found on the property that my grandpa bought. 
The details aren't exactly clear how this was discovered, but apparently some type of survey was done before the property was sold, and archaeologists from the University of Pittsburgh uncovered a very old Native American grave. They excavated the grave, but the pit, now just a depression in the ground, was still there. This was on my grandpa's property, about 200 yards from the cabin. Of course, when I was a kid, my cousins and I used to do very dumb and disrespectful things like go back to the site in the middle of the night and dare each other to lay down in it. I was probably about 10 years old when this happened, in the early 90s. My dad swears he doesn't remember it, but my cousin, whom I keep in touch with, clearly also remembers it. We were sitting around the campfire, roasting hot dogs and marshmallows, talking, that type of thing. Obviously, there was no alcohol on my part, as I was like 10, and my dad didn't drink. I remember my dad shushing everybody, and my older cousins and my dad were talking about seeing somebody in the woods. My dad is telling everybody to be quiet, and he shines a flashlight into the woods. We don't see anybody. We go back to our business, and one of my cousins shouts out that he is there again. By shielding the light from the fire, you can see a wispy, grayish human figure walking through the woods slowly, prowling like he's trying not to make any noise. He was walking from our left as if he came from behind the cabin and was crossing the wood line along our left and then across the front of the yard just along the trees, but probably 50 yards or so from us, taking a wide turn to avoid us. Nobody said a word. My dad and one of my cousins both shined flashlights several times, but he would disappear. You could only see him in the dark after your eyes adjusted. At some point, he walked into the field of view where the fire was between us and him, and we never saw him again. The creepy part is that the direction he was walking was towards the gravesite. We had never seen this before and never saw it again. I probably spent a week every summer at the camp until I was about 20. Family drama and weirdness after my grandpa died kind of ruined the camp for us, and I haven't been back. Needless to say, we didn't mess with the grave again after this. This happened a few years ago. I'd hiked this trail many, many times before. The trailhead is only dot 5 miles out of town and you have cell signal the whole time, one of the bigger reasons I felt comfortable doing it solo so many times. I spent the first mile up the mountain talking to my sister on the phone. I heard leaves crunching off the trail a few times, but with all the wildlife out there, I didn't think much of it and continued on with our talk. After we hung up, I took a quick break to catch my breath and grab a drink of water. I continued on for about five minutes, enjoying the quiet of the forest and the initial colors of the sun starting to set. I heard someone walking quickly a little ways down from the trail, I assumed it was someone at a switchback further down. As I turn to look, I see an all-black figure walking upright like a human. My brain is trying to make sense of it, maybe a super skinny bear walking on its hind legs? I continue to watch as it walks behind a tree, and I'm waiting for it to appear on the other side. But nothing. It disappears, and so does the sound of its footsteps. It's absolutely silent. I've never been so terrified in my entire life, and I immediately started looking around for some sort of weapon. The best I can find is a dried out stick. That was the first time I started that trail and didn't finish, but I wanted nothing more than to be back in my car. It took me over two years to hike that trail again. So this happened a few years ago, in my spring break senior year of high school. I was hiking part of the long trail slash at, which goes south from Glastonbury to Bennington, and it was the usual very cold nights and warm, muddy days Vermont usually has in the spring, so pretty fun to hike in. I was going to take a day and rest my feet, go swimming in a pond, and cool off, so I took a detour onto the Bald Mountain Trail. I got to my campsite around 5, and the sun was setting, so I set up my hammock and rain tarp and made a fire. I made some mountain house beef stroganoff and decided to just lay down and watch the fire. I hadn't seen anyone since before noon, which is unusual because it's a pretty well-traveled section of the trail. I started to get really uneasy, and it definitely felt like someone was watching me from a distance. I ended up sitting with my back against a maple, facing the fire, and holding my camp knife. A few hours later, 9-10-ish, I heard a really loud crash in the woods, like a plane falling out of the sky or a freight train right next to me. Then there was dead silence. No wind, no leaves, no owls, just dead quiet. I remember getting really, really uncomfortable and shouting out to see if there was anyone out there but I just started hearing a really subtle droning noise, like a key being rubbed on a bass string or radio static, but super low pitched. I didn't sleep at all that night, I just watched the moon go really slowly over the sky, and the sound got quieter as it got lighter outside. When I could see well enough to walk, I picked up my gear and sprinted back to the main trail. I found some people up early and hiked with them all the way back. My parents had bought a house with a large yard, and about an acre back there was a forest. One day, 
My grandmother was babysitting me. I decided to run around the backyard and play. She went inside to go to the bathroom. I remember something beckoning me to go into the forest, just a strong urge. So I did. I didn't go in very far before coming across a perfectly circular area filled with flowers. The sun was shining on it through the trees. It was so bright, and there were all different colorful flowers. There was a buck standing in the middle of it. It was staring at me. I was little, so it looked huge to me. I got a bit closer, and it didn't run. I was just watching me. I got so excited about the beautiful scene that I ran back out to tell my grandmother. When I did, she was standing there, and she looked horrified. Where did you go? I was looking for you everywhere, you had me worried sick. Apparently, I'd been gone for a really long time. I was confused. Regardless, I insisted on showing her what I found. She followed me into the woods, where the flower field and deer were, but they were all gone. I swore up and down to her about what I found and that it was just gone now. I remember being really upset and confused. To this day, I wonder if I walked into some sort of portal or dimension. When I turned 13, we lived elsewhere, but I started having dreams about a single door in the middle of those woods. It had been reoccurring for a few years. It really makes you wonder. There is so much we still don't understand as humans. Last summer I was visiting my mother and stepfather at their camp, around here, summer cabins or cottages are called camps, on the Independence River near Laval, New York. It was evening, and it was dark out. We were all hanging out inside, but I went out to have a smoke and sit by our dwindling campfire. While I was sitting there, I suddenly heard what sounded like a female voice talking, though I couldn't make out any words. I immediately thought that I'd butt dialed my phone or something, but when I pulled it out of my pocket, it was clear I hadn't. The sounds I heard then turned into what sounded like full-blown conversation and laughter and went on for about two minutes when suddenly it just stopped. I went back in and told them what I'd heard, and they were quiet for a second, just looking at each other, at which point they said, so you heard it too. Apparently, they've been hearing it for years but don't mention it because they don't want people to think they're crazy. Understand, there's really nothing but woods around this place. It couldn't have been people, because they would have had to have flashlights that could be seen. In the darkness, they'd also make a ton of noise crashing through the leaves and underbrush. I've spent a fair amount of time in the woods, and what I heard was nothing familiar. I know that a lot of animals can make strange noises, like foxes and rabbits, but I've been scouring the net for recordings of similar sounding animals and haven't found a thing. Very strange. Adirondack woods are some of the creepiest woods you'll ever find. This is a true story that happened to me a little bit ago. So I stay home alone a lot while my mom and stepdad go to work. I got picked up early from school a few weeks ago because I wasn't feeling good, and my mom told me to make sure to walk our dog outside for a bit. Okay, no big deal. I'll sit and rest while he plays. It's a normal thing that I do. So as I'm sitting there, my dog starts to act weird. He's a chihuahua puppy, and if you have one or have been around one, you know they're weird little dudes, so I didn't think anything of it. But when he acts weird, he barks, and this time he was just shying towards me and whimpering. Strange, but again, he's weird, so I didn't think anything of it. But then I started hearing these weird sounds in my woods. Now, for context, my house is surrounded by thick woods, and in the front is a highway. Other than that, I'm pretty secluded, and there's wood everywhere, and they're pretty deep. So I step off of my porch, and that's when I really hear what's making him so nervous. It sounds like an animal is hurt, like a really, really hurt puppy or fox or something kin to that. So I, an idiot, start walking towards the woods to see if I can see the animal and make sure it's okay. As I'm getting closer, my dog is losing his SHT and trying to bark at me to go back. That's when it started to sound less like an animal and more like someone trying to sound like one. It sounded like someone with a scratchy throat trying to make a whimpering puppy or dog sound. Maybe my dog is onto something. So I scoop him up, and we go back inside for the rest of the day. The next incident was about a week after that. I was calling my dog to come eat his breakfast, again, I was home alone sick, and I yelled, here, Brian, my dog's name. And then I heard in my mother's voice, come here, Brian. Here, boy. In my woods. I call my mom, and she insists she's at work and hasn't been home since she left. I call my dad in tears, and he's a very logical guy and says it was either my voice echoing or my imagination, but I know what I heard. There's no way she could have pranked me either, because I called her work, and they confirmed she was there and had been there the whole time. Some years ago, I'd say 2014 or 2015, my sister and I were scouring all the hiking trails in San Jose, and one afternoon we decided upon a small but semi-reputable sounding one. 
We parked after surviving a badly made one-way road and started out with our dog around 3 to 3.30. The trail markers weren't in great condition, but we still easily found a main path to a scenic overview. It was a 20 to 30 minute hike that curved gently around a giant rock and was relatively straightforward. We got to the overlook, admiring views of a dam and town for a good minute before turning around to start back. We turned around, and it was as if the straightforward trail we'd just been on had vanished and there was only one to the left going up and one to the right going down. At first, we thought, okay, this is weird, but let's just get back. I tried the path going up and around a hill, but it didn't seem right. At this point, I said, well, the gate's close in 45 minutes, we have time if we can connect back with the trail we took. So we went back to the one heading down and somehow kept going further down the mountain when it should have joined with the main one. We knew something was wrong when the direction wasn't changing and it was getting dark. So keep in mind that we parked at 3-ish, got to the overlook at 4, and by 6 to 6.30 were lost. Thank you for everything. I brought my mobile charger, and there was a clear spot with reception halfway up the trail we were on and at the top where it intersected. I had to call 911, and I had to call the park service to get someone to pick us up, the listed park's emergency numbers were useless. Once we were rescued, it was a good 15-minute drive back to the lot. Had the main road been that long, we never would have made it to the scenic overlook with the sun still up. It was a 20-30 to 30 minute walk on an obvious main trail with plenty of light still, and we ended up needing a drive back that would have taken us two hours to walk. Not to mention my sister's dog, who is typically very good at knowing where to go, was frightened and confused. We are convinced we got caught in a vortex or time warp of some kind because we can't explain how a fairly short walk put us hours away from the car. Me and a group, there's four of us total, go to hike Blood Mountain, a sacred mountain for the Cherokee Indians. The hike starts off nice enough. It starts getting foggy, which we think is pretty awesome looking in the woods. Everything's going fine until I go onto this path that looks freshly made. I walk down it, maybe eight feet, and I see a single hoof print embedded really deep into the dirt. It looks pretty fresh. My immediate thought is boars, which we weren't prepared to deal with, so we go back and head on. About 30 or so minutes later, we start hearing stuff behind us. Rustling in the woods, and, at one point, we hear this soft roar. It sounded really strange, and quite frankly, I've never heard anything like it. We're getting nervous, but we continue. Eventually, we come upon a side trail that's marked for shelter. I'm curious, so I go to check it out. It's longer than I'd like, but I keep going. About two minutes down the trail, I hear a huge rustle right next to me. Naturally, I get the hell out of there, running back to my group. I explain what I heard to them, and they think it might be a bear, nothing supernatural or strange comes to mind. We continue on to the top without any problems, except for some really strange smells and the fog thickening. It's on the way down that we have the real experience. The fog is getting extremely thick now. The visibility is probably 7 feet ahead at its lowest point and about 5 feet ahead at its highest point towards the end of the hike. We start back the way we came from the peak, and I see something duck behind a tree. It was in my visibility, so it wasn't the fog playing tricks on me. The best way I can describe it is that it was definitely humanoid, about a little over half my height. It was black and light gray and had fur. I didn't get a good look at its face. I looked behind the tree, and nothing was there. We keep going, and the fog gets thicker. As we continue, we start hearing noises behind us really often. The most concerning moment was the fact that we couldn't hear any natural noises. The rain was still falling, but there was no sound, no birds chirping, and no wind. The only sound we could hear was just us. I should explain that we had difficulty coming down the rest of the hike since one of our hikers was having trouble with his ankle, causing us to rest quite often. It was during one of these rests that I went off to take a piss. I'm slightly in the woods, but not completely because I'm too freaked out to venture away from the group or go off the trail. I hear this heavy breath in my ear. I gasped and turned around, and nothing was there. We continued on, and 20 minutes later, we started hearing the rain and natural noises again, like normal. Nothing besides the noises continues until we get off the trail up the mountain and onto the one off the mountain. We're resting on some rocks, talking about the stuff we saw when six bursts of roars came from in front of us and behind us. It was the same sound as before, and there was no break in between them. It finished with a sound I cannot really try to explain. It was like a mixture between a roar and a snort, and it was right next to me. I shouted, grabbed my knife, and turned, and of course nothing was there. At this point, the troubles with the hiker's ankle were so bad that we had to split up into two groups of two, grab the car, and wait for them at the trailhead. Me and another hiker go off to get the car, eventually finding the road. 
We find the two of them, and one of them says they saw an old man in what he says are scout uniforms, I assume he meant Boy Scouts? He said he was in a green and brown button-down shirt and pants. I was just standing there between two trees, stepped right, and disappeared. We get out of the area, and the fog immediately lifts. We all agree we were being followed, but what is the question? Some of us think skinwalkers, but I believe those are Navajo. Goatmen are an option being considered, especially with the lack of natural noises. My girlfriend and I really like to try and find new hikes in western Colorado. We decided to try a new trail that was not on the National Monument and was way away from any other trail. It was a good deal of the way out of town as well. Anyway, we were one of the only cars parked at the trailhead, and as we were walking, it quickly got dark. We made it all the way until the moon rose, and all of a sudden, further down the trail, at least a few miles, we heard automatic gunfire. Pop pop pop, then silence for a couple seconds. Pop pop pop. Now, this is kind of a normal thing for my area, even though it is not public land. I knew a lot of buddies who would know of many forgotten trails to shoot on and not get caught. My girlfriend asked me if I thought they were gunshots, and I told her that I couldn't think of anything else in the middle of this wilderness. We decided it would be best to turn back. We were about two miles down the trail at this point, at the top of a very large hill covered in desert shrubs. As soon as we stopped talking, we realized something was wrong. All of the insects had stopped chirping, there had been dozens of crickets the entire hike up, all of the sounds of nature had completely stopped. My girlfriend was facing further down the trail, and I was facing back the way we came, ready to turn back. She looks behind me, then screams and starts to run. I was already scared shless, but I figured the worst it could be was some drunk redneck about to give us some trouble. I turned and looked where she was, and I immediately ran after her. I have never run so fast in my life. The shrubs were about two to three feet high in varying spots, and when I turned around, I don't know how to describe it, but it looked like a shadow, even with the moonlight directly shining on it, it was almost an absence of light. It was already slowly standing up when I turned around. As soon as it fully rose up, I realized that I was looking up at it, and it had to be at least a foot taller than me. It had a very human figure, but it was not human. We sprinted back to my car, still with nature silent the whole way. I was in such a hurry when we ran to my car that neither of us noticed I hadn't had to put my keys in to unlock the car. We were halfway through the drive home when we realized that. Every single hair on my body was raised, and if I'm being honest, I've never felt anything like what I did when I saw it. Every fiber of my being screamed run, and I was almost paralyzed by the fear that washed over me. One day a few years ago, I asked a friend of mine if he wanted to go to the local forest with me, it's fairly small, only a few miles long. I've been there 10,000 times growing up, but he has never. It's all woods, not like a campground or anything and there is rarely anybody there, even during the day. I pick him up around 5 or 6, and we go. It was tons of fun just walking around and hanging out. It's maybe like 8 now and is pitch black in the woods. I suggest we leave, so we start walking down the path back to the car, probably a mile away. I don't remember in the moment if it was a small noise or if we both just saw movement, but I looked over to the left, and I swear I saw something that shook me to my core. It was a humanoid-looking figure with no legs that was either weirdly clear or see-through, moving fast, towards the way we came from, so away from our car. It looked to literally be gliding over things, making no noise as we watched it go by. We then look back and see a giant bright light down the path towards where the figure was moving, which is weird because there are no roads or anything for miles. I can't imagine why there would be a light like that. I've been there late at night when a cop or ranger would be in the parking area, and it looks nothing like it, it was 10x brighter. I was frozen and terrified. I look over to him praying, he saw the same thing, so I whisper, did you just see that? And he looks at me literally uncontrollably shaking, maybe even on the verge of tears, and is like, oh my god, what was that? What's that like? So at that point, we just ran. I ran as fast as I could the entire way back to the car, and we left. I wanted to make sure we were on the same page with what we saw, and he drew a little sketch, which looked basically identical to what I saw. It was terrifying, and I 100% believe in ghosts now. I just can't imagine what else it could have been because I especially saw no legs, and no noise was made. Someone sprinting through the leaves and whatnot would definitely make noise. It was so quiet in there that you could hear a pin drop. I still, to this day, have no idea what that was and still get a little shaken thinking about it. I tried to get my friend to go back, even during the day, but he absolutely refused. I had another friend go with me during the day and late at night two or three times now, but we've never seen anything weird. One night, 
Me and two friends were all walking around at night in the fields around a small town called Saranac in West Michigan. Our destination was a junkyard tucked away behind several fields, home to rusted out cars, semi-trailers, farm equipment, etc. We were cutting through the fields to avoid the homes of the trigger-happy farmers that live around there. Just about there, we were foiled by a stream too wide to leap. It was late autumn, and wet feet would be uncomfortable, so we backtracked into the adjacent field. From our corner of the field, there was a tree line on our left that ran east-west, and ahead southward, the land rose gently into a medium-sized hill. We stood for a moment, discussing our options, when my eyes were drawn to a large white boulder that seemed to glow a bit in the moonlight. It was around 75 yards away, beneath the tree line, and I was idly staring at it when it moved. It unfolded, standing up, a 10-12 foot bipedal being, skeletal thin, pure white, with long limbs. For the space of a second, it looked at us, and then it took off. I think it was running, but it may have been gliding or flying. I'm honestly unsure. It crossed the field, up over the hill, a distance of probably 100 yards, in 2 to 3 seconds, in complete silence, and was gone. Only two of the three of us saw it, and after a few minutes of incoherent gibbering, we tried to rationalize, explain, and figure out what the hell we saw, and when nothing made sense, we decided it must be an alien being of some sort. It was on two legs, so definitely not an animal from these parts, and it moved faster than even a car could accelerate. Because we were young and brave, or just batshit crazy, we ended up finding a place to ford the stream and made it to the junkyard. The only other strange thing we saw that night was off a trail that led from the junkyard, the trail led to the woods, and where it met the trees was an archway of the darkest darkness I've ever seen, a yawning chasm of midnight, a distinctly different shade than the surrounding trees. At the foot of the trail next to our feet, ISHT you not, was a pile of small bones. We scarpered off real quick after we saw that. Fast forward to a year later. I was at a party talking to a fellow, and the subject of aliens came up. I say, I've seen an alien. And they say, yeah, let me guess, in Saranac, right? I confirm, we exchange mutual looks of awe, and he directs me to this Eric fellow who grew up in said town. Eric tells me that he has seen strange things there his whole life, lights in the sky, etc. but no humanoid beings. Fast forward another year and a half or so, and I get a phone call from an acquaintance who was sitting at work when he noticed a girl staring at him strangely. She eventually walks up to him and says, I feel like I need to talk to you. After a while of awkward conversation, she proceeds to tell him that her friend's dad is the head of a vampire clan in a town near Saranac. My friend remembers my story about weird things in that area and asks her if she knows anything about Saranac. She gets very defensive and eventually reveals that Saranac is a breeding ground for dragons. Yeah. To this day, I'm not certain if I saw a dragon, an alien, or a vampire, but I did a bit of poking around, and I heard from a girl who lived there as a kid that she had seen random 15-foot scorch marks on roadsides and in the middle of fields. When I was 15 or so, me and my group of friends all slept over at the leader of our friend group's house. This dude lived in the most absolutely rural area of our rural town, basically in the middle of the woods, in a house just absolutely surrounded by thick walls of trees. In the evening, we decided to go out and start a bonfire deep in his woods, so we packed up, got all our materials, and went straight out into the woods. On the way to the spot we'd be making our campfire at, he told us about how ducked up and creepy his woods are and the numerous things he's seen. White, skinny figures were peeking around his shed, staring at him and running off when he looked at it, screaming and whispering from the woods, figures watching him, all that good stuff. It set the mood pretty well. By around 7 at night, we had the campfire set up, and it was pitch black outside, as it was the middle of winter in New Hampshire. I can still remember how creepy the whole vibe was that night. You could not see a single thing besides the ring of light coming out of the fire, everything else was just a black wall of nothingness, and the sound of the forest was so quiet that it was almost deafeningly loud if we didn't talk. We ended up needing more firewood or whatever we were using for the campfire, so the leader took me with him to go get it. Without a flashlight or any light source, me and him walked the mile and a half long trail back to his house in complete and utter darkness. It was all good, we were talking, joking with each other, and having a good time just hanging out when the first noises started. He immediately made me stop talking. To my left and right were a bunch of different sounds. Screaming, laughing, talking, whispering, shouting, and people saying inaudible words, it sounded like there were around 20 people around us. The natural night vision had set in a decent amount, and I looked over at my friend, who had his head completely down and did not say a single word. Known for being a complete goofball and a wild, funny dude, I had never seen him look so shaken and serious in my life. 
He had this look to him that still kind of haunts me to this day. Knowing him as this fearless leader type of our group and seeing him so shaken up and afraid was really, really unsettling. I started to say something along the lines of what the hell is that? Before he cut me off and told me to be quiet, face forward, and not pay attention to any of the sounds. I did what he said, and the next three or so minutes were uncomfortable and terrifying. I remember feeling sick to my stomach. By the time we reached his house, the sounds had stopped, and we both grabbed what we needed to grab in silence. That's when I could really listen to the sheer quietness of that night. No birds, no sticks falling, no sound. Absurdly silent. We walked back to the campsite, and nothing else occurred that night. This is still my most unsettling and bizarre experience, which I have almost no explanation for. So me and my partner went hiking to a place in central Britain called Shropshire. We were walking up to the peak of this hill, which is scattered with giant 50-60 foot rock formations. It was early in the morning, the sun was rising, but the area was fully lit, and we were all alone. She was behind me, struggling to keep up, looking down to watch where she was walking, so I didn't see a thing. I looked ahead, and on the leftmost mound of rocks there was what I thought was a person. I was pissed off that I'd have to say that bragrudging British good morning to a complete stranger when I wanted tranquilly. Suddenly this person bent forward and put all fours on the ground, but not bent in half, it had a full U-shaped bend like a rainbow, and that's when I realized the person wasn't wearing any clothes, and then it moved. I can't describe how it moved. It was almost like a centipede with precise agility over rock formations. While pooping myself, I ran ahead to see what it was. No animal I have ever experienced in my life has gone without a trace. And when I reached the rocks, I realized that it possibly stood about 7 to 8 feet tall on its hind legs. It is safe to say I was on edge the whole hike then, and getting back to my car was an absolute highlight.